The next time you fly on an airplane, you can thank Ross Hamery for his instrumental role in helping keep air travel safe. During his 34-year career with the Federal Aviation Administration, he managed FAA security issues internationally and no doubt leaves behind a permanent legacy that still keeps us safe today. Ross was born in Tuscaloosa, Alabama, the second of four children. He comes from a long line of public servants, including his father, a World War II era Army officer who went on to a career in microbiology with the Department of Defense. The family moved around to different places, including Frederick, Maryland, Utah, and eventually Northern Virginia, where Ross attended Woodbridge High School. Ross and his father visited Maryville College the summer before his senior year of high school, and he received an acceptance letter within weeks. Ross arrived on the Maryville College campus in the fall of 1966. Majoring in political science, he ran track and lettered during his freshman year under Coach Monk Tomlinson. He was involved on campus and was a member of the Student Government Association, the Fellowship of Christian Athletes, and the yearbook staff. He also managed the intramurals program under Coach J.D. Davis. During his sophomore year, he met a freshman named Chris McCormick. They attended a dance together after Christmas break and then became a couple. Ross graduated from MC in 1970, establishing a family tradition for his two younger sisters, Dottie and Barbara, who also attended MC. After graduation, Ross moved back home to Virginia to find a job. An acquaintance had suggested that he talk to the FAA, which was hiring air traffic controllers. He walked into the Washington, D.C. building, not realizing that he needed to go to the employment office. Instead, he went directly to the Office of Personnel and began talking to a man he later learned was the Director of Personnel for the FAA. He was hired as a personnel management intern and thus began a 34-year career with the FAA. Ross and Chris got married in September 1971, and the following month, Ross got a personnel management specialist job with the FAA in Seattle where for the next several years he served in all personnel management disciplines and was promoted up the career ladder to GS-12. In 1977, the couple bought their first house in Rainier Beach and their first daughter, Jordan, was born. The family moved to Denver, Colorado in 1979 when Ross was promoted to the chief employment branch of the FAA's Rocky Mountain region. In August 1981, the Professional Air Traffic Controllers Organization declared an illegal strike resulting in the firing of 15,000 employees nationwide by the Reagan administration, including 700 controllers who were fired in the Rocky Mountain region. A decision was made by the Reagan administration to reduce the amount of regional headquarters offices, which resulted in regions being combined. Ross, who had been appointed to lead the consolidation team and handle the reduction in force in the Rocky Mountain and Northwest regions, was promoted in 1982 to manager of personnel operations in the newly created Northwest Mountain region in Seattle. In 1985, the family, which now included daughter Kelsey, moved to Atlanta when Ross became Deputy Personnel Officer of FAA's Southern Region, the FAA's largest region with over 8,000 employees. In 1987, he led the FAA team that completely redesigned the air traffic controller hiring process, reducing the time it took to hire a qualified applicant from 120 days to 30 days. During this time, there was an increase in terrorism against aviation. TWA Flight 847 from Athens to Rome was hijacked in June 1985, and there were other hijackings in Europe. The FAA began expanding its security workforce during this time. Ross switched from personnel to security in 1987 and became Deputy Division Manager of Civil Aviation Security for the Southern Region in Atlanta, leading a national team to establish classification and organizational guidance for all civil aviation security positions. In December 1988, Pan Am Flight 103 exploded over Lockerbie, Scotland, killing all 259 people on board. Ross served on a three-person team to analyze the recommendations of the Presidential Commission Report on Civil Aviation Security and implemented security strategies. He was also selected for the FAA's first senior executive development cadre during this time. In August 1990, Iraq invaded Kuwait and Ross reported to Brussels, Belgium in October as the FAA's Civil Aviation Security Division Manager for Europe, Africa, and the Middle East, managing an expansion from six employees to 48 employees based in nine countries, and was responsible for the security of all U.S. airlines in the region. In 1991, the Gulf War started, and Ross's team implemented security measures for American air carriers flying in the region. 
Ross's family had also moved to Brussels, and Chris took the opportunity to travel with daughters Jordan and Kelsey before beginning work as an assistant teacher at the International School of Brussels. In 1992, Ross was inducted into the FAA senior executive ranks, so the family moved to Washington, D.C., where Ross became Deputy Director of Civil Aviation Security Operations, responsible for directing a workforce of 800 agents and regulating the security of U.S. air carriers and all 1,700 FAA facilities. In January 1995, Ross and his team directed and implemented security measures throughout Asia to counter the Bojinka plot, in which 11 U.S. airlines were to be destroyed in flight by explosives smuggled aboard aircraft. In June 1995, Ross directed all aviation security efforts and measures to counter a bomb threat by the Unabomber. One of the security measures his team implemented was to require passengers to show ID when boarding airplanes. The following month, Ross moved to the position of Director of the Office of Civil Aviation Security Policy and R&D. During this time, he started the funding for increased explosive detection screenings and full-body scanners for airport security checkpoints. Ross moved to Singapore in 1996 as director of the Asia-Pacific International Office. As the senior FAA official in Asia, he oversaw the agency's efforts in security, safety, and air traffic. He also worked to get the countries to adopt the use of satellite for air traffic control. He and his family moved back to D.C. in 2000 for a new position as director of the Office of International Aviation, in which he was responsible for the development of FAA international policy. Then the September 11th attacks occurred. The FAA stopped all air traffic, and three days later, Ross assumed the position of Director of the FAA Civil Aviation Security's Office of Operations, where his experience and effectiveness were critically needed. In this role, he was responsible for all U.S. aviation security activities worldwide in the aftermath of 9-11. He handled airport closures and aircraft turnbacks as a result of security lapses, and after a passenger shoe bomb attempt, he signed an order requiring the inspection of shoes during airport security screenings. In 2002, he became director of FAA's Office of Security and Investigations, and in 2003, he was appointed director of the Office of Security and Intelligence for the Department of Transportation. The U.S. invaded Iraq in 2003, and in March 2004, Ross led a team to Iraq as the personal representative of the Secretary of Transportation to rebuild transportation infrastructure in that country and in Afghanistan. He retired from the FAA in July 2004, and he and Chris moved to Washington, North Carolina, and began restoring a 100-year-old house, doing most of the work themselves. Ross began volunteering for Habitat for Humanity and later served on its board. He also became president of Downtown Washington on the Waterfront, a Main Street organization with the mission of downtown redevelopment. Ross brought opposing factions together by forming a citizens committee that eventually reached an agreement on the development of city-owned waterfront property. In July 2012, Ross and Chris, deciding they wanted to live in a bigger city, moved back to Atlanta. Devoted to his alma mater, Ross was recently a member of the college's National Alumni Board, serving as chair of the Finance Committee. He is a President Circle member, a regular volunteer during Kin Takahashi Week, and he was instrumental in planning the college's memorial garden. Awards and recognitions are nothing new to this Maryville College alumnus. Ross was awarded the Secretary of Transportation's prestigious gold medal twice, once in 2003 for outstanding service after 9-11, and again in 2004 for his contributions to the rebuilding of transportation infrastructure in the war-torn Middle East. In presenting the first gold medal to Ross, the Secretary of Transportation said the award was for symbolizing greatness as an outstanding public servant whose extraordinary contributions and personal sacrifice have been beyond the call of duty in furthering the expansion of international aviation safety and security around the world. Ross, we appreciate your service to your country, your community, and your alma mater, and we proudly present you with another award, Maryville College's Alumni Citation. Congratulations.